Here's your news for August 6th, 2020. And your headlines for today include, Marty Jannetty's shocking admission leads to police investigation. Truly shocking history of Marty Jannetty's confessions. WWE's current plans for Raw Underground title. What does CM Punk think about Raw Underground? Pat McAfee punts Adam Cole in the head during NXT. Why Dexter Loomis is out of NXT North American title ladder match. NXT teases a mystery opponent. WWE finds their next big thing. Is Matt Hardy seriously injured? Rebby Hardy reacts. AEW takes over old WWE website. Why Dana White called The Rock. The sad passing of two wrestlers and more. We are starting today with some worrying news from Marty Jannetty as the former superstar has made some concerning posts online. On Facebook, Jannetty seemingly confessed to killing a man in his teenage years after the alleged victim tried to force himself on the future WWE superstar. In his post, Jannetty said that this was the first time he made someone disappear and added that they never found the body, but they should have looked in the Chattahoochee River, presumably in or near Columbus, Georgia, where Jannetty grew up. What's even more chilling is that the former Intercontinental and Tag Team Champion said that this story was a warning to his current long-term girlfriend, as he made a promise after the alleged incident that no one would hurt him again, and that includes her. This isn't the first worrying post Marty has made on Facebook, as he once asked fans whether or not he should have sex with his daughter, and claimed that former US President Barack Obama wasn't black until, quote, it was cool to be black. In February 2019, Jannetty sent out two tweets claiming he'd had sex with himself for four hours, and followed this up with a Facebook post in April where he made some claims about the number of women he slept with. He said, I definitely loves every one of my 637 ladies. Who do I love the mostest? And you not supposed to pick a favorite child, but you know deep inside you, you do, lol. You just can't say it out loud. You already know. On March 5th, 2019, Jannetty posted that he couldn't find his phone, a problem we've all had at some point or another, but gave some worrying details, saying, Last I remember having it, I was at my neighbor's girl's house up on a roof because I could get a better view of her neighbor girl who was laying at her pool naked, but I went back and looked on her roof, but it wasn't there. The next month, the former superstar posted what he described as a cry for help, claiming he'd been partying every day since WrestleMania 35 two months prior, and said that he'd refuse rehab, saying he'd already gone twice, once for sex addiction and the other time for substance abuse. Though Marty has deleted his latest post where he seemingly confesses to killing a man, TMZ are reporting that Columbus, Georgia police are now investigating any missing person cases from the area at the time, though current crimes and homicides will take priority. Although his post may be deleted, this story isn't going anywhere anytime soon and we'll provide updates on this concerning story when they become available. We've got some news from Raw next as there's been a lot of questions asked about this week's Raw Underground. The Shoot Fight segment debuted this week, and whilst this week's edition of the Red Brand did see a slight boost in viewers, the company aren't planning too far in advance. According to Steve Carrier of Ringside News, the company is, quote, making things up as they go, with no real plan. There's plenty of possible directions that Raw Underground could go from here, including the introduction of a Raw Underground title, though it seems that, as of right now, there's no plans for a new title to be revealed. Whilst this week's three-hour show did see a ratings boost, it's impossible to know if this was directly due to fans tuning in to see Raw Underground, but fans can expect WWE to try out plenty of ideas in their latest attempt to boost the Red Brand's dwindling ratings. Whilst fans are still split on Raw Underground after this week's show, one person who enjoyed what he saw was CM Punk. During the FS1 watch party of SummerSlam 1992, the former world champion gave his opinion and what he wants to see next. He said, I absolutely loved it, Punk said. I want to see Nia Jax in there. They should get more women in there. Let us see some bodies getting broken. Punk isn't the only person who wants to see women compete in the underground, as Liv Morgan has said she wants to be a part of the shoot fight style segments. Whilst Punk liked the segment, he didn't fully enjoy Raw, as he questioned whether Bruce Prichard is the right voice to be writing for a TV show in 2020. 
With Raw Underground's shoot fight style, the segment has potential to get a whole different kind of wrestling fans watching, and given his UFC past, it's entirely possible that Punk could soon be in the underground himself. We're focusing on NXT next as the latest shot has been fired in the feud between Adam Cole and Pat McAfee. During this week's NXT tag title match between Imperium and the Undisputed Era, McAfee and Cole began arguing, shades of their infamous argument on Pat's show, and this distraction cost the Undisputed Era the win. A post-match brawl ensued after McAfee said Cole would always be short, and when the former NXT champion tried to climb over the announce table, McAfee showed off his NFL punter skills with a kick to the head that'd make Randy Orton proud. This immediately brought out Triple H, who had McAfee escorted from the building, and with NXT ending with Shawn Michaels checking on the knocked out Cole, this story is far from over. Speaking of the gold brand, we've got an update regarding Dexter Loomis, as after suffering a leg injury, it's been confirmed that he's out of the TakeOver 30 North American title ladder match. This change was confirmed by William Regal on this week's show, and added that Loomis's replacement will be determined in a special Fatal 4-Way match. This match will consist of those who lost the ladder match qualifiers without taking the pin, which means Finn Balor, Johnny Gargano, and Ridge Holland all have a second chance. The fourth man in their qualifier will be determined in a match between Kushida, Cameron Grimes, and a yet-to-be-announced opponent, and time will tell which individuals get to fill the final spots in what will be a historic ladder match for the vacant NXT North American title. We're looking ahead to next week's NXT as the show will see Kushida, Grimes, and their mystery opponent face off, but this isn't the only big match confirmed. Karrion Cross will make an appearance when he faces Danny Burch, whilst Bronson Reed will face Damian Priest. Needless to say, next week's show will be a packed two-hour event as the road to NXT TakeOver 30 continues. Speaking of the gold brand, we've mentioned that Ridge Holland will have a second chance at qualifying for the North American title ladder match, and there's a good reason to think he'll win this second chance. During Wrestling Observer Live, Brian Alvarez commented on the former rugby league star, saying, They think that he has the potential to be the next big thing, which is, that's saying something, so we'll see. Though Holland's debut with NXT didn't go how he wanted, there's always the second chance. And given that he's reportedly being considered the next big thing, a moniker that once belonged to Brock Lesnar, it may be a matter of time before the English star holds the North American title. Over to AEW now as the lineup has been revealed for next week's show. TNT champion Cody will once again defend his title, this time against Scorpio Sky of SCU, whilst the show will be a special tag team appreciation night that'll see champions Kenny Omega and Hangman Page face Jurassic Express, whilst the Young Bucks take on Stu Grayson and Evil Uno. Orange Cassidy and Chris Jericho will compete in what's being called a $7,000 obligation match, meaning if the freshly squeezed one loses, he must pay seven grand for the jacket he ruined when he poured orange juice on the inner circle. On this week's show, Cassidy won his debate, but was laid out by Jericho and Jake Hager, and hopefully that won't happen again next week, or Cassidy will end up seven grand poorer. We've got more AEW news next as this week's show promised a big surprise and certainly delivered. For this week's debate between Chris Jericho and Orange Cassidy, Eric Bischoff appeared on Dynamite to moderate the segment, and though this had already been spoiled on Reddit, it was still pretty shocking to see. As of right now, there are no more plans for Bischoff to appear on Dynamite, but given his unique exit from WWE, and the fact that Tony Khan has credited Bischoff's work with WCW for enabling AEW to be on TNT, this probably won't be the last time Bischoff appears for the All Elite Company. One person who didn't enjoy themselves on this week's Dynamite was Matt Hardy, who was left a bloody mess after tangling with Sammy Guevara. After attacking the former WWE superstar mid-promo, Guevara chucked a non-folding chair at Hardy, causing Matt to be cut with the sharp edge of the chair in a bloody incident that wasn't intentional. On Twitter, Matt's wife Rebby simply tweeted, Dumbass, and though she didn't direct it at anyone in particular, we can only assume it was aimed at Guevara. Hopefully Matt will be okay, as this isn't the first time he's been busted open badly, but clearly this is a spot the company didn't want to happen in the first place. We've got even more AEW news next, as the company is known for taking shots at WWE in the past, and have now found a way for their competition to promote them. 
If you watch any old WWF matches or segments featuring the right to censor, you'll almost certainly see the website righttocensor.com displayed, a URL which is now owned by AEW. Now if you visit righttocensor.com, you'll instead be sent to AEW's official website, though it isn't uncommon for rival companies to own domain addresses linked to their opponents. Whilst AEW may not have any plans to form their own right to censor stable, they now own the URL and have received plenty of free advertising on WWE's own network. Over to the XFL now, as following The Rock and his business partner Danny Garcia's huge purchase, UFC's Dana White has some advice for them. Speaking to TMZ Sports, White described the purchase as a smart investment and said that the Brahma Bull should seize the opportunity. He said, If I was The Rock, I'd get that rolling as fast as I could. I'd try to get that on TV as soon as possible. They're dying for live sports programming. I'm actually going to call The Rock today and walk him through what I think he needs to do. We don't know whether that call ever took place, but given UFC's monumental success and the current unprecedented situation, it couldn't hurt the great one to hear White out. Over to Impact now and Eric Young has confirmed he's signed a new deal with the company. Young confirmed the news with Sports Kita and said he's got a lot left in the tank, and after being inserted into the world title match at Slammiversary and reportedly calling Vince McMahon a failure to his face, fans can expect EY and Impact for a long time to come. And we're ending today with some sad news as Jaguar Vijay Singh has died, aged 46. A Toronto-based wrestler, Singh was originally trained by the legendary Ron Hutchinson and last competed in 2003. Singh leaves behind a wife and three children and is sadly not the only recent death in wrestling. Marvelous Mitch Ryder, who previously worked for Chikara, has also died, aged 48, as confirmed by Ian Rotten. On social media, stars like Drew Gulak, Evil Uno, and Chris Hero paid their respects to Ryder, and we'd like to send our condolences to both Ryder's and Singh's families at this sad time.